In previous lecture, we learned how a JavaScript engine parses and executes a JavaScript program inside the browser. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the execution context and execution stack and what is its role in the execution of a JavaScript program. Whenever you call a function in your JavaScript program, there is something called as execution context which gets created for that function. You can consider an execution context as a box or a container inside which the variables are stored and a piece of JavaScript code gets executed. For example, here we have this sum function. And this sum function has two parameters, num1 and num2, and a variable sum. Now, when you call this function, an execution context for this function will be created. And inside that execution context, these parameters num1 and num2 and this variable sum will be stored. And the, this piece of code will be executed inside that execution context. So, for every function call, a new execution context gets created and inside that execution context, the variables are stored and a piece of JavaScript code gets executed. Now, the default execution context is always a global execution context. So, whenever you run your program, all the global variables and global functions get stored in the global execution context. Okay, so where does global variables and global functions stored and executed? It is stored and executed in the global execution context. Now, before I move on, I just want to make something clear here. So in case of browser, the global object is the window object. So whenever you create a global variable, it gets attached to that global object as its property. And similarly, when you create a function, it gets attached to the global object as its method. So in case of browser, the global object is the window object. And when you declare a variable, a global variable like first name, it is similar to writing window.firstName. In this example, we have two global variables, name and age. So these two global variables will be attached to the window object as its property. And when we say name and do the equality check with window.name, it will return true. And this proves that this name is nothing but a property of this window, dot, window object. Okay. Similarly for age, if you do this equality check with window.age, it will again return true. So this age is also a property of this window object. So the point here to remember is that whenever you create a global variable, by default, it gets attached to the global object as its property. And in case of browser, the global object is the window object. Similarly, when you create a function, when you declare a function, a global function, it gets attached to the global object as its method. So this first function will be attached to this window object as its method. Okay. So let's now understand what is execution context and execution stack. Here we have an example program. Okay. And in this example program, in this JavaScript program, we have two global variables and three global functions. So when you run this program, a global execution context will be created. And inside this global execution context, all the global variables and functions will be stored and executed. Okay. Now, inside this global scope, we are calling this first function. So this first function will be called from this global execution context. And currently, this global execution context is the active execution context. Okay, and from this global execution context, we are calling this first function. So once this first function is called, a new execution context for this first function will be created on top of the currently executing execution context. And 
here the currently execution executing execution context was this global execution context so on top of this a new execution context got created for this first function and now this execution context will become the active execution context so inside this first function we are creating a variable a so this variable will be stored in the execution context of this first function and then we are calling this second function so now a new execution context for the second function will be created on top of the currently executing execution context okay and the execution context of the second function will become the active context now and inside this function we are declaring this variable b so that b will be stored in the execution context of the second function and then we are calling this third function from within this second function so another execution context will be created for this third function and now this execution context will become the active execution context and inside this function we are declaring two variables c and z so these two variables will be stored in the execution context of this third function and then this function returns so once the function returns the execution context of that function gets popped off from the execution stack so here when this third function returns the execution context of this third function will be removed from the execution stack and now the second function will again become the active execution context and now inside the second function we are declaring this variable z so this z variable will be stored in the execution context of this second function and now this second function also returns so the execution context of the second function will also get removed from the execution stack and we are back to the first function and now the execution context of this first function is the active execution context inside this function now we are declaring a variable x so now this variable x will be stored in the execution context of this first function and this first function also returns so the execution const context of this first function also gets removed from the execution stack and the global execution context is now the active execution context so like this we have executed all the three functions and we popped off the execution context of these functions from the execution stack once these function returned so now this global execution context is the current execution context the active execution context and when all the javascript codes are executed then the execution context this global execution context also gets popped off from the execution stack and in this way we have executed this javascript program so this is how a javascript program gets executed inside an execution context and when we have an execution context on top of another execution context it is called as execution stack here we have one execution context on top of other execution context so these execution contexts are forming a stack and it is called as execution stack okay in next lecture we will learn how these execution contexts gets created in javascript if you like this lecture like this video subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends